next part of our series here is we're going to remove our intake system here. The first thing on Harley Davidson's we want to be a little bit careful of is the fact that this outer air box that we took off earlier that presses and supports the carburetor in place, there's no other physical fastener on here. We just have a grommet style. So when you go to take yours off, you want to be careful that your carburetor isn't just going to fall and crash to uh, the floor. So I'm going to just set this to the side here. I've laid out a few tools. I just want to talk about the differences here. Okay, so our standard Allens, where they're square, are going to have a very hard time of fitting in this application. Different size here, but the same principle of short being long is we have to be able to get up and away from the intake, and you'll see in a second. What's really going to be our best friend here is what we call a ball end Allen so that we can get in place. And we have to be really, really careful not to strip things here. So we can't have any dirt in that. If you check out some of our other fastener videos, and you guys remember that, we had to be really good and clean. And we need to make sure that this is fully seated so we grab as much real estate as, as possible. You can see from that side maybe a little bit better. Okay? <coughs> and then take a look at this guy. This is a pretty cool tool, available pretty much any motorcycle shop that sells uh, Parts Unlimited or uh, Biker's Choice products. You can see here it's a combination wrench. You'll see that's going to work really handy, a really nice tight bend on that. And then probably one of the coolest ones is this right here. This company is selling a lot of Harley-Davidson products, if you will, for uh, hand tools and such to work on these motors. Made in the USA, love it. There's your part number. You can get these at about any bike shop as well, Harley dealer, aftermarket, you name it. But take a look at what we have here is we have a replaceable tip. So we have the ball end one and then we have the straight one and we're going to attempt to do like final torque with a straight one. If you try to torque it to spec with a ball end, it's going to uh, definitely give you grief. So we'll talk about that more later on. Let's go ahead and move to the uh, manifold itself. I want to be able to show two things here really quick. Zoom in. On this side of the flange, you can actually see how it's rounded and the bolt goes all the way through it. Okay, you can see on the back side of the intake manifold how it's slotted. Okay, so just keep that in mind real quick here. Our goal is, I'll show the different tools, is we can take this guy, get in here and tighten this down uh, or loosen it either way. You can imagine this works pretty slick, okay? This seems really easy right now because the carburetor isn't on here, but what I really need you to do is I've got a different video, I'll put a link in there where I explain the installation of this very well. At this point, if you want to watch the older evil one I did because it's the exact same from when Harley-Davidson started using this type of manifold forward till today, even if this is a fuel-injected throttle body, this installation procedure is pretty important. You cannot torque this in place right now, okay? And the problem is, is that this rotates in here, which you'll see in a little bit on the disassembly. And if this is twisted up, don't you see how these won't be in alignment now? So you actually have to be able to put everything on here loose. And we talked about that in class yesterday. Remember about how we talked about everything needs to be in place, just, you know, hand tight. And then you go and you do this torque procedure, and that's going to allow this to be in the proper position. Okay? Well, let's go ahead and just uh, see a couple of these other tools. Back up a hair. Then we have, this is for that ball end. You see how we could get in here and get multiple different angles even if the carburetor was in place. And then our ratchet one, I'm gonna go ahead and use the square side of it. And being so it's a ratchet, I can flip it either way obviously. Be able to see the size of fastener here and get an idea for now I'm gonna switch sides here why do I need to be careful over here do you think make sure you don't ruin the flat edges I don't want to hit the sensor oh that's right. so if I just if I'm not standing and supporting this can you back up to show my arm support here there you go perfect you can see here where I put my arm so that when I crack this loose, I have control not to bang into that electrical sensor. Make sense? All right. I'm going to do the same on the back side. And now I have to switch to the ball end.
Now you take your whole manifold, just kind of wiggle it out there. Out and out of the way. So now you can actually see where it was hinged on there and how you uh, pull that part. Pulling it off is easy. Putting it back together is a different story to make it happen right. Since we just have this in front of us right now, I want... do you see the F? Yep. Okay, keep that in mind for if you take this apart to clean it, that means for the front cylinder. So if we go ahead and just look back at this, you can see that that was for the front flange. If you reverse these, it's not going to work. You're going to have a problem when you go to do assembly on this. So a couple different things for you guys as entry level techs doing this for the first time to pay attention to. I'll go ahead and uh, show you what this assembly looks like. Very, very simple compression design. Can you see the taper of that gasket? So it's tapered. So take that off and then my flange and then I'm down to just this piece. So if we take a look here, you can see how this how this flange is tapered in here and how this o-ring seal is going to go like that and then this flat edge is what's going to go against the cylinder head here this is a high place for leaks and when we leak here it's unfiltered unmetered air that makes our fuel system run lean so that it's not desirable it's fuel injected it's going to run lean if it's carbureted it's going to run lean bypassing the fuel control system